Hey everyone, John here from Learn to Stargaze, and I've just been sent the new Sea Star Smart Telescope from ZWO. Now, Kui the Lazy Geek has several videos on this telescope, and he covers pretty much everything you need to know. But there's one thing that I have that the Lazy Geek does not, and that's dark skies. So let's get in the car, go to Stargaze Nova Scotia, and see how this telescope performs. Before I show you the scenes from our dark sky location, Stargaze Nova Scotia, I did get a chance to test the telescope here in the city. I tried to use it in a way that most people who buy this telescope are using it. And we can tell exactly how other people are using this telescope because of the community feature. You simply select this option here, and there's a feed of images posted by other Seastar owners. And as you're gathering images, you can share your images with the community too. Now, if you scroll through this list, you'll notice that most of the images posted here only have a few minutes of exposure time, as opposed to the several hours a serious astrophotographer might gather. Some are upwards of an hour, but that seems to be the exception rather than the rule. In other words, people are using this telescope just as they would a telescope designed for visual observations. They're only staying on a single target for a short period of time before moving on. That said, let me show you some images that I took from here in the city. You'll notice that some of these images have a gradient, which is either caused by the nearby streetlight or by light pollution, since it's brighter in this part of the sky, which is closer to downtown. Okay, here are my images from the city. Here's a 31 minute exposure of the Horsehead Nebula. Here's a 35 minute exposure of the Elephant Trunk. Here's a 47 minute exposure of Galaxy M33. Here's a 31 minute exposure of the Andromeda Galaxy and its satellite galaxy, M110. Here's just a four minute exposure on the Crescent Nebula. Here's Double Star Albirio. Here's the Dumbbell Nebula, M27, after just two minutes. And here's a one minute exposure of Globular Cluster, M13. You can also take amazing videos of the moon. Just look at this live image. You can zoom in and out. You can take a photo, a video, or even a time lapse. You can also take images of the planets too, but they're pretty small in this telescope. Here's Jupiter from a couple evenings ago. Now there are two nebula we're gonna shoot from here in the city as well as from our dark sky site, Stargaze Nova Scotia. The first is the Pac-Man Nebula. Here's a 10 minute exposure from the city and second, the famous Orion Nebula here at 13 minutes of exposure. Okay, now on to our dark sky test site. All right, we're here at Stargaze Nova Scotia. The skies are pitch black, and we're about to open the ZWO Sea Star Telescope and put it to the test. You can see how small this tripod is. Really tiny. If we extend it all the way, it's still tiny. Let's put it up here on this rise. Press and hold to turn it on. All right, we're gonna hit connect. It's gonna search for the telescope. That's cool that it talks. All right, start exploring. From the city a couple nights ago, I checked out the Pac-Man Nebula. So I think we'll go back to that now that we're in dark skies, take a few minutes of exposure and see how they compare. We're gonna hit telling us to level it. Okay, so we've got a level uh, diagram here. Almost there. I guess at home I just set this up on the deck. And I didn't need to think about it. So you finish adjusting. Okay, I think that was good enough. Well, let's go to our first target here. I'm gonna go to the map. All right, we're above the horizon on the map. Let's go over to the Pac-Man Nebula, which is near Cassiopeia here. Zoom in, there it is. All right, go to. We can see on the screen that it says identifying. And so that means it's taking a picture of the sky to know what it is. Now it says going to the object, so we can see the telescope is moving again. Object is centered. Okay, so the telescope says the object is centered. We're gonna hit this autofocus button. Auto focusing. Auto focusing. All right, let's 
finished focusing. We can see the stars are now quite a bit sharper. All right, so now we're gonna hit uh, the button here to start taking the image. Of course, this is a nebula, so I'm actually gonna flip that filter on. Even though the skies are dark, I wanna keep sort of all things equal to what we did last night. All right, it's gonna take a minute to, I assume, take some calibration frames here. So hopefully my filming light is not uh, getting in the way too bad. I might try and stand in the shadow here, there. Because what the telescope is ultimately gonna do is it's going to live stack. So it's gonna take 10 second exposures and then it, it's gonna apply what's called calibration frames. So here's our first frame and we can already see uh, some of the nebulosity in this image, which is kind of cool. All right, so what we're gonna do is let this run for a little while and then again, we'll compare that to the image that I took last night. All right, so we've been focusing on the Pac-Man Nebula for about half an hour, and we've gathered 11 minutes of total exposure. So I'm guessing that because it's not perfectly level, I'm losing a few shots due to star trails. So we're not as time efficient as we were from the city where the telescope was sitting on the picnic table. Um, the other thing I noticed that was interesting, see there, we've got another stack fail. Uh, because this is not equatorially mounted, because it's altazimuth, the position of the nebula in the image is, is different depending on what time of night we start it taking the exposure and where in the sky the target is. All right, now we're just gonna move over to the Orion Nebula, the most popular stargazing target of the winter sky. All right, we can frame it up, wow. There's enough magnification in this telescope that the entire Orion Nebula is not going to fit. So we're going to have to choose which part of the Orion Nebula we want to take a picture of. How's our dew situation? Yeah, so we can turn a dew heater on. I don't know if it was on automatically. Looks like we need to wait until it's finished slewing, but I can see that the telescope is getting covered in frost because it is below uh, zero degrees Celsius out here. All right, it says it's centered, not quite. So what we can do here is use a little hand controller to move it around until it's centered. Wow, that is sensitive, okay. All right, that's better. Okay, we've got the Orion Nebula centered. Let's start taking exposures. Start enhancing image. Oh, wow, look at that, all right. There's our first image of the Orion Nebula from Stargaze Nova Scotia using the Sea Star Telescope. I'm going to check that the dew heater's on here. But besides that, let's just let it run for a while and uh, see what we come up with. Oh, anti-dew. There we go. Okay, so tonight we were joined by the Dalhousie Astronomical Society, or DAS. Do you guys go by DAS? We can. We can. <laughs> we do now. <laughs> DAS? I think the Accounting Society has that taken but <laughs> how's the accounting <laughs> yeah, society we do yeah. with two A's. <laughs> okay all right uh anyway they were really helpful uh helping me set up for this video and helping out here at stargaze nova scotia all right so the sea star has been taking data on the orion nebula for about 20 minutes we have 10 minutes and 20 seconds of data we use the filter for that it is so cold we're gonna pack it in and we've also got some students here from Dalhousie University and they need to go home as well. So I think we're done for the night, but this has been really fun, uh, really easy just to be able to drop the sea star uh, here on the ground um, at Stargaze Nova Scotia and start taking stacked images immediately. So with almost no setup. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on ZWO's new Sea Star Smart Telescope. Subscribe to Learn to Stargaze so you don't miss the next video. And remember, the future is looking up.